Hello, friends. Welcome back to another exciting episode of This Week in iPad. I am your host. My name is Lon Harris. Joining me, as always, in the studio, our resident iPad expert, and expert on many, many things. Many things. I actually got in trouble. Last, uh, a few episodes ago, you mentioned I was an expert in whiskey, and my uh, father uh, gave me a call and said, you're not, you're not drinking too much now, are you? So, Dad, no. I'm not. I promise. You can be an expert on something, it doesn't mean a booze hound. Yes. It means you know a lot about it. He inferred. He's worried about it. Right. So uh, this is I can't Jake, blame him. Jacob Birch, our, our resident iPad and non-alcohol expert. Thank you. Uh, and joining us today via Skype, very excited uh, to have them here, uh, Jason Smith, the creator of Uzu for the iPad, the Uzu app. Jason, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Uzu is one of these uh, really like quirky, very unique to the iPad apps. It sort of became kind of a cultural phenomenon. I first became aware of it over the July 4th weekend. Uh, and as soon as I started playing with it, I'm like, this this guy, we got to have come on the, uh, the iPad show. Because it's, it's like nothing else that I've played with for the iPad. So uh, Jason, feel free to jump in if we're talking about something that interests you. And then we will chat with you uh, later in the show about the Uzu, the Uzu app and all the interesting, fun little uh, facets of that project. Yeah, sure. Uh, so thanks everybody for joining us. Again, I do want a, a couple quick show notes before we jump into the news. Uh, first off, I want to invite everybody who's watching us right now to tune in live this coming Monday night at uh, 7 p.m., 7-ish, probably like 7.15 or so, uh, for the very first episode of a new show starring Jacob and myself, This Week in Mad Men. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Speaking of whiskey, <laughs> speaking of drinking whiskey, uh, really excited to do this. I've been wanting to do a show uh, that's really very, like, in the moment, like in a, you know, about something that's really going on right then, because we have this studio, we have the ability to do things almost in, in sort of real time, as it were. So it's gonna be really exciting. Mad Men is on, the debut of Mad Men is Sunday night. Monday night, we'll be here in the studio talking about Mad Men, looking ahead at the season. And guests. Look, and looking fashionable. Looking fashionable, drinking whiskey, guests. It, it's gonna be fun. If you're a fan of Mad Men, I urge you to tune in live. Uh, that's gonna be a good time. Uh, I also always here at the top of the show like to uh, tip of my cap to to uh, Matthew Paulson, who is our iPad blogger, and uh, you can check his site out, iPadWeek.ly, iPad Weekly. Uh, great info. I use it every week when looking for the iPad news. Uh, so thanks to Matthew. He's usually in the chat room as Matthew DP. I'm not sure I've seen him here today, but maybe he's here. Uh, thanks to Matthew. A great, doing a great job as always. It's it's awesome to have a, a really committed blogger uh, working on the site because we we don't you know necessarily have time and. Um, it, it just helps a lot to have great content there as well. And the show notes have become ten times better since he took over. Oh, so. world's better. The guy's the guys the guys on point. So uh, thanks thanks to Matthew. Uh, and uh, I do want to thank all of our sponsors. I'm going to talk about our brand new sponsor in just a moment here. Uh, but at the top of the show, uh, I want to thank all of our sponsors. There's Press. Press Reader, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, Print Magic HD, they've been with us for a while, uh, and Gazelle, uh, all great companies. We'll talk about all of them today, but if you want to go and thank them on Twitter, say, like, I'm watching this week in iPad, thanks to at Press Display, at Willala, W E L L A L A underscore Inc., and at Gazelle underscore com. Uh, really nice to do. Thank them for, for helping us out, supporting the show. Uh, we love our sponsors here. They, they, they're, they're what makes the show possible. So if you enjoy the show, if you do enjoy what we do, definitely go to Twitter and thank them. Uh, and before we go any further, I do wanna, wanna take some time to talk about Press Reader. Uh, it's our brand new sponsor. They're, they're coming on board today. And this is honestly an amazing app. I mean, all of our sponsors are amazing. They're all great. I love all of these products, but Press Reader, it's from Press Direct. Uh, pre it's from Newspaper Direct. Uh, it's the only app that brings you 1,500 full yeah. content newspapers and magazines. This is from 90 countries, I mean, all over the world. It, they download directly into your iPad. You can use it on the iPod Touch or the iPhone as well, but they look beautiful here on the iPad. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring it up. Uh, it, and there's tons of features I'll, I'll show you guys around. As you can see, it's actually downloading today's LA Times for me. So we'll look at that in a second. You can actually set it up. You can just go download on your own, or you can set it up to like, I wanna read the LA Times every day. It's the complete paper. So we'll pull it up. It, it's finishing, it's 47.5 megs. I mean, it's a big file. It's a whole newspaper. It's done. It's 70 pages. 
So let's take a look. I mean, you can see this is not like some little for the iPad version. This is the entire newspaper, the photos, and you can see they'll even highlight. Um, so it, it's, you know, mostly like a, like a PDF, but they'll highlight the link so you can click here and read the rest of the article. Uh, you can go here and there's the table of contents. You can skip to whatever part of the paper. So if I want to go read the calendar section, I can hit it and there it is. There's their salt review from today. Uh, you know, full featured, you could scroll through it just like you would, uh, you know, any other sort of app. And most apps you would get, you know, you can subscribe to like one newspaper. It's like, I'm going to get the New York Times app, and then I get the New York Times. And usually it's like a web version too, it's not complete. This is pretty much any paper you could want from any country you could want. I mean, we'll go to the, I was just showing you my library. We can actually go to select a title and here are all the countries. I mean, you can see Armenian papers, Chilean papers, papers from Hong Kong, papers from Japan, papers from Lithuania. Uh, I actually downloaded just to sort of test it out. Uh, this is a Pakistani paper and you can see there's like, you know, here that you can zoom in even. So this is like an editorial cartoon from Pakistan and edit, this is their editorial page. I mean, you can see like, if you want to know what the weather is like in Islamabad, bad today. This is how you can find out. Uh, and it's pretty reasonable too. Uh, 99 cents per title. So if you download the app, the app is free. You download the app. It's called Press Reader. And then you can just, if you want to buy one paper from one day, you can just go in. It's a buck. Or you could pay $10 and you get 31 downloads a month for your $10. Uh, you know, that's that's basically one paper every day, or you can jump around and pick a bunch of different papers, or $30 a month and you get access to everything that's in there. So that's what they, they hooked us up with. And I mean, it, it really is mind-blowing, a completely astounding amount of information in your iPad for $30 a month. And, and it's a great experience to read it. It's, it's incredibly easy to use. You can see I've got the Calgary Herald here, the Orange County Register, my hometown paper. It's got a great search function, so you can actually scan around if you're looking for an article about one particular story and you want to see what different places are saying about it. And it's even got this top stories feature, so I can pick a newspaper and just see what the front page stories are from that paper, like a little preview. Incredible, uh, the amount of information, the uh, it, how easy it is to use, all packed into this one app. Uh, you can zoom in and out, you can search, I mean, tons of features. So uh, thank you to Press Reader for sponsoring the show. Everybody go check it out, it's free. So you can go just to the app store and get Press Reader and check it out for free. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking you're gonna be hooked after you try it out once. Did you get, did you get a chance to check it out? I, I did, and I think the first thing you notice when you click select titles, like you said, it's just mind blowing how many newspapers there are. Yeah, I mean, uh, 1,500 full papers. So if you're in a place where you can speak more than one language and you want to see what's going on in either uh, your home country or you know where you have relatives, it's right there. It's not watered down. It's not poorly translated. It's what they're what you're looking for um, and it's just a wealth of information. Yeah, really just just in a, a an, inc an incredible uh, find and I, I love that they came on board because this is one of those apps that uh, like Uzu, where you, you try it out and you're like, whoa, this is this is amazing. I mean, it really takes your takes your breath away at first and a great way to sort of show off what the iPad can do, how much information is really at your fingertips now um, with the iPad. So uh, thanks to Press Reader. Uh, thank them on, on Twitter at, at Press Display, which is the company, and just go go to the App Store and check it out. Uh, I doubt you'll be uh, I, I doubt you'll be disappointed by what you find. So we're gonna try a new segment here right up at the front before we jump into the news. I don't know, you guys will you guys will let me know what you think. Uh, I, I'm feeling like we should jump in and do fun show-off stuff on the iPad before we do the news. I figured that would be more fun at the top of the show. If you love it or hate it, I'm at Lons, L-O-N-S on Twitter. Let me know what you think, because I don't want to bore you guys, but I'd like to do a game review up front. I play a ton of games and it's really on my hard. iPad. We, we have plenty of the apps, uh, and we, we did uh, some learning educational games. Yeah, but we it did became, card games. But it became really hard to fit. So games are such a huge part of the app store, such a huge part of what people want reviewed, that we figured this was a really good way to sort of yeah. consolidate that. And that's one of the big pieces of feedback I get on the show, is people are like, what about games? You guys don't talk enough about games, and everybody's using their iPad as a sort of game uh, console almost at this point. I mean, not a console, but like everybody's using it as a platform to play games at this point, uh, and, and we're not talking enough about it. So every week we're going to open, Jacob or I will quickly review a game we're playing that week. So this week I'm playing Fruit Ninja HD. So let's take a look at it right here. Uh, it is it is fun, but at the same time it is not really very robust. Like I can't imagine I would play this 
very much. So you can see it's, it's, it's pretty simple. You can get right in. Basically, he's going to throw fruit up here, and I have to slash it in half with my sword. Uh, and then bunches of fruit will come up, and I have to slash through all of them, and I can get bonus points if I'm really quick or efficient in how I slash the fruit. And every time I, a piece of fruit falls and I don't slash it, I get a point taken away, and after I lose three, uh, I lose. And also, if I hit one of these bombs... Uh, I lose. So, you know, it, 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 there's a li it's very challenging. It's definitely almost frustrating in that it's pretty hard at first to uh, figure out your path to slash the fruit without hitting a bomb, but this is really it. I mean, there's two modes. I can play it like this, or I can play Zen version, which is basically just the same game, but without bombs. So uh, uh, ultimately, it's pretty much identical. And this is it, and it's a $5 game. So I, I really don't know how long this would keep me entertained for my five bucks, and I'm almost lost already because I'm focusing on talking to you guys in addition to playing. So um, it, it's definitely challenging. If what you're looking for in a game is that you want it to be like pretty tough and you know, you, you, it takes a while to master, I guess this one would be pretty good. But personally, I, I, got, I got bored with it pretty quickly. I, it really didn't keep my attention. For $5, it just seems like it should really be a bit more robust. I mean, considering some of the other games that you can get for a few dollars, you know, five bucks for a game that is really, really simple on that basic level of, you literally just slash like that. And, you know, the better you do, you can pick different backgrounds. So I'm in a wood panel dojo. You can get like a, a, a couple other backgrounds and you can get different swords, which is really just the colored streaky line behind my finger that I use to slash, but not, not nearly enough to keep me really engaged. I mean, we rule is free and then you have the option to buy mana. I've been playing that for weeks now. So, I mean, compared to some of the games that are out there, this just feels, it, it feels slight part of the game as opposed to a full-fledged game. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a side game and a larger game, not a whole game to itself. And if it was a dollar or something, I know there's a version on the iPhone that's popular that I guess is a buck or two. And that I could see being like, you know, while you're waiting for a plane or something, it's fun to keep you occupied. But as a full iPad game, the other thing I should mention is they have a multiplayer, which two people have, can play on the iPad at once. But you have to, like keep it in the middle of a table and do it that way, and it's hard to see. There's glare issues, um, and you know people keep trying to sort of lean the iPad towards them. It's a little clunky. I, I tried it with uh, my girlfriend. It didn't, it didn't go well. Um, so yeah, I, I would think pass on this for five bucks. Fruit Ninja HD, it's sort of a middling review. I can't really recommend. Uh, there you have it. There you have it. So that's our, that's our, new, our new feature. And I will... Uh, game review. You'll review a game next week. I'm excited. I have one picked out. I'll... Uh, you want to you you give a teaser? It, it'll be... Uh, it's a game, one of my favorite... Probably my favorite game on the iPhone. It's called 100 Rogues. And either today or yesterday, they released the iPad version. Ah, well, there uh, you go. So I'm very excited to play around with it over next week and uh, give my review. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on. We'll do some news and... Uh, you know, Jason, as, a, as our resident iPad developer, if you feel the need to jump in on any of these and give us your perspective, we'd love to hear it. So definitely okay. don't feel like definitely don't feel like you have to keep quiet. Because I know some <laughs> guests come in and then they're like, "Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to jump in while the experts are talking. We don't really know what we're talking about." So, so yeah, definitely, right. definitely jump in. Uh, the first thing we have to talk about is Flipboard. Uh, definitely the biggest iPad story this week. Uh, Launch to pretty much universal buzz and acclaim. Uh, people on the blogs were kind of going nuts about this one. It's an iPad social media magazine. I can give you guys a little taste of what it's like. Here, I, I can't, uh, for reasons we'll get into, I can't actually show you what it does because it's not really working for pretty much anybody yet. Uh, so I can't really show you around, but I can give you a little taste of, it basically takes um, your sort of social networks, things people are posting in your Twitter, in your Facebook, and it turns them into this kind of magazine view. So I can hit the article and it'll pull it up and then I can go read more on the web or even just scroll through it. And so it, it's sort of a news aggregator, but that's pulling from your social networks and, and that kind of content. And it's, of course, going to add layers on top of it, too, of people liking it and allowing you to sort of share things within your social network right from the app and read through it. So really like a next generation kind of social magazine, social media magazine. PC Magazine called it the best looking news app, the first that lives up to the promise of the iPad as a media platform. Uh, CNET called it cool, uh, noting that there's no way to cache stories, but I'm sure that's coming. Mashable said they were thoroughly impressed. Um, the, the, here's the problem. The buzz was so strong, everybody was talking about uh, what was going on with the app, uh, the servers almost immediately became overwhelmed. Uh, th 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 you, nobody can actually import their Twitter and Facebook into it. Uh, at first, you would just get a message that says, 
we can't do it yet, come back later. Now they've actually done an upgrade, so you see this upgrade coming in the app store, you're like, oh, I'm gonna install the new version, it's gonna work. And then it tells you, uh, you need to send in your email and we'll tell you when you can get invited to put in your Twitter and Facebook. So, uh, you know, obviously these things happen. I don't wanna, think, you know, I'm sure it's a complicated system to put in. You're, you're a developer, so certainly you understand the complications that can come when a new product comes out and gets this kind of level of buzz, but at the same time, you're just cringing because there's $10.5 million of VC money. Investors include Jack Dorsey, Facebook co-founder Dustin Moskovitz, Ashton Kutcher. So there's so much money, there's so much riding on this. Uh, and then it comes out, it's getting this massive buzz, it's gonna work, and no one can use it. Everybody's having this frustrating experience of trying it, and then it's not working. And I saw, I've seen people on Twitter in the last day or two I'm uninstalling, you know, and I, this is this is terrible. I just want to try it. And then, of course, they invited, like, Robert Scoble gets to try it early, which just makes people feel, like, unimportant, like they don't matter, and they're letting these kingpins sort of look into it. So I, I sympathize, but at the same time, like, man, it's a, it's just a horrible position for these guys to be in on their, on their launch week. If it's as good as... Uh, I played around with it. I liked it. I thought it was very pretty and slick. It's sort of hard to tell what features I'm going to get when I get my invite. Uh, so I can't yeah. give a, a full review. There's a few, I had a few nits, but it's completely possible by the time I get invited, they work those out or it becomes more clear. Um, but that said, I'm sure they're just subscribing to the philosophy, which I agree with, of get it out there. And if it breaks, it breaks. Fix it as soon as you can. And people are will, you know, tweets, I'm unscribing, like you said. But at the same time, people will get over it. And if it's yeah. as good as they say it is, people will get over it. There's always that unsubscribe, like yeah. that angry, immediate reaction when something doesn't work the way it's ideally supposed to. Uh, so ev everybody has that. I mean, we, at this weekend, are no strangers to that as well. Um, but so, you know, that, that those, these things happen. But, and that's, if, that's natural. And if they were going to be a repeat consumer of the application, they're, they're going to come back. I don't think there's anyone that would have kept it, would have loved it, and then is having this angry response. So um, I, I sympathize maybe a little bit more than you, uh, but that's also because well, I've been there. Uh, I mean, I, I, I feel for them, and I'm, I'm obviously, I still have it installed. I'm definitely going to try it. I would have loved to be able to review it because it's the hottest app this week, and we have this iPad show, but there, I, I even tweeted them like, hey, I'd really love to <laughs> review this. Can you, can you see grease, your way to getting me stuff? the wheel a little I've bit. tried to do that twice. I have no <laughs> juice because I tried to do that with Hulu, Hulu, too. Like, Hulu Plus, I'm still waiting for my beta, but I was like, can you guys please? I have this show, and, like, we get, we get some decent. We've been viewed over... 2.2 million uh, downloads on, uh, on iTunes. You'd think I'd have a little more pull. No. None, no pull. They have. They're working on a few issues. A little bit more important than a. Uh, I, I guess. Even. I guess so. So anyway, uh, so that's that's Flipboard. We'll we'll talk about it again once we get to actually uh, try it out. We'll we'll talk about it and again. And once it's out there, definitely. Um, I sort of re reading through my show notes, and I agreed. It definitely needs to be compared to Pulse because they're definitely trying to go in the same direction. They're taking two fairly different stances from it. One is hugely VC backed, one is not. So it'll be interesting to do a compare and contrast when we can. And Rishi Ed in the uh, chat room is saying there's a new version on iTunes. I think that's the one I'm talking about where you reinstall and you think, oh, this is it, there's a new version. And then it just brings up the send us your email and we'll let you know I, when I it works. I re-edited it uh, two hours before the show. Yeah, and, and I, it's still, I still my email. Email. They're just They're gonna email me, presumably. I checked my email right before the show because I thought maybe it'll come to the task of there. Uh, so that's how nerdy I am, that I'm actually like waiting by my email, like, oh, they're gonna invite me to see Flipboard, and it still doesn't work. Uh, okay, we, we, gotta, we gotta move along, we're, we're, dragging, we're dragging here. Uh, so uh, let, let's take a look. I thought this was kind of funny, we won't spend too long on this, but uh, a blog called Electronic House did a roundup of the 10 weirdest iPad accessories, and I wanted to show uh, some of my favorites on here that were particularly weird. Uh, so we can pull up my laptop here. This is the, the iMaxi, which is a, like, <laughs> maxi pad type cover with protective wings for your iPad in case your iPad gets injured. I mean, obviously it's Etsy. It's supposed to be kind of a kind of a gag. Uh, would you would you uh, would you pay 30, 30 for that? No. 30 bucks? No. I, if you look at it closed up, it's actually sort of a neat design. Yeah, we can but see it closed up. There's the I'll, I'll bring up. There's the closed up version. So it, it actually is not uh, you don't have to leave it looking as offensive as it looks originally. Except it has the name on it, so it, the iMac. I mean, yeah. I don't. I wonder how this started. If it, it started with the the Maxi idea, and then they designed it, or they designed it like, uh, you know, 
crab looks like a tampon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think. I think that pad thing had to have been designed uh, intentionally. There's there's no way you would accidentally stumble on like, oh, it happens to look well, exactly like a maxi pad. But if you're having a package that's going to have four flaps. It does. Uh, it's durable vinyl and plush quilted cotton. So it, it does. I'm the, sure it's useful. The etymology behind the product would be interesting. That's yes. all I'm saying. Uh, okay, so let's, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is the Scott E. Vest. A lot of people obviously have heard of them. They, they produce some of Leo's shows and some other web shows. Uh, and it's a jacket that you can actually put your entire iPad in. I would love to try one. If anyone from Scott E. Vest is watching and wants to send me a uh, jacket uh, so I can test it out. It seems like it would be very uncomfortable to be walking around with an actual iPad inside your jacket, but uh, they're, they're a big brand, and you know, people like it. And if you don't look like a big enough jackass on the train with your iPad already because it's new and novel, you go, hold on one second. Mm. <laughs> Let me take out my iPad. Yeah, it's, yeah a little, it's a little, it's a little funky, but uh, I'm sure useful. This next one I really liked. This is called the thigh pad. And if you're well, like me and you've ever found yourself sitting and feeling like, oh, this two pound or less iPad is so cumbersome to hold, you can now strap your iPad to your thigh using Velcro and then just sit and use it that way. It doesn't look 100% secure. I'd be a little concerned about it falling, but you know, there you go. And, and uh, David Pope from the New York Times says it's a great product. It sounds useful, but at the same time, I don't know if I can even get my mind eye about, let me just attach this. You know, it's like a holster for a gun. But it's, it's basically a holster for a gun, but for an iPad. Uh, I'm trying to see how much it costs, but it, the, the site seems to be down right now. Uh, so we'll just, we'll just move on uh, to the water guard. This is a great idea for certain situations I've never found myself in. <laughs> it is a underwater waterproof case for the iPad, for $20, you can now put your iPad in this sealed package, bring it with you into the lake, the ocean, your pool, maybe. Seinfeld had a bit about waterproof wallets, I think, which right. comes to mind. In case you just need to show it. Well, I mean, sea if, you were like, if you were like in the jacuzzi or something and you want to be using your iPad, that, that, might, that might come in handy. Leave the iPad at home and no, go in the jacuzzi. Know, like in your backyard no. or something. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. If you're the, the Old Spice guy would find a use for that because he spends a lot of time in saunas. I don't think the, I, the uh, Old Spice guy would use an iPad in a sauna. He's too busy. With the ladies. He's, he's very mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, the last one we'll look at. Uh, the I, This is a great idea. This is not even weird. This is just brilliant. It's called the iDrift, and it is a steering wheel that goes around your iPad. So when you're playing driving games, you can actually uh. like drive your iPad. That is such a good idea because dr it is weird to have the like tilt and try to manipulate a driving game just holding the iPad. This, they take care of all of that for you. Uh, it's you know it's almost like a case, but for a driving game that would be so perfect to to have the controls. Um, I really like I really like that. That's a genuinely a good idea. I mean they I you know they have that for the Wii. Uh, I, right when, yeah when remind, playing, that's what it reminds me of is when you get a console and then you have like the little accessory for certain kinds of games. Uh, it, a brilliant idea. It looks like it's really well executed, really well made. Um, I I'm I never use it on the Wii, so I would probably not get one. But uh, I also don't play a lot of racing games, so. I'll shut up. Well, I don't play a lot of racing games, but because I think the controls on the iPad are a Fair little enough. weird for racing games, I bet if I had one of these, I may actually get this and we'll show it on the show, but if I had one of these, uh, I think I would probably get more racing games for the uh, You could You can try, the, uh, try to fail it on Twitter again. Hey, guys, can you yeah, send me one to review? I can give it, yeah, you get thoroughly ignored. Then not, not get one. <laughs> Jason, out of all of those, which, which one was your favorite? Which one would you buy? Oh, that's rough. You know, I might have to go with the underwater one, yeah. but I will say that the iPad coat was one of my first thoughts the second I got the iPad. It was like, I wish I had like a place I could sort of tuck it while I walk. Yeah, you know, in here, in there. Yeah. In, I mean, not for real, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's, know, it's I kind of like carrying, it's sort of status, you know? Like you're walking around with one, people are like, ooh, that guy has an iPad. <laughs> yeah. He's awesome. Although it, the status the thing would, would be nice out. because you could take you could take the iPad on a boat, you might want to use the GPS, things like that. It could yeah. fall in, maybe the thing floats. Uh, you can see where our heads are at. I'm like, I'm sitting and luxuriating in a jacuzzi, and he's like yeah, out there fishing, doing sportsman-like no. things. You can, you can see uh, 
you can see uh, we're, we're different perspectives. So uh, one more one more uh, news story I want to talk about before we uh, talk to Jason. Uh, the uh, uh, according to data from web video portal site Mefedia, web video viewers watch content for significantly longer on their iPads than they do on desktop computers. Uh, it's based on the habits of 125,000 unique mobile visitors to Mefedia. So obviously this is a select group. It's not you know a, a true study of that's random, but uh, since July 1st, discovered on average, iPad viewers watch videos for five minutes, Symbian users watch for 4.1 minutes, Android users for three minutes, iPhone viewers for 2.4 minutes, and according to TubeMogul, uh, most video viewers on desktops watch for only two minutes or less. So it's more than double on the iPad, uh, as opposed to sort of all of these other uh, definitely since, uh, as opposed to watching it on your desktop. Uh, BusinessInsider.com, where I found the story, had some theories that I'm not sure I agree with as to why this might be. Their main one was because videos load slower on the iPad, and so you're like investing in waiting for the video and you're not just gonna click off it right away. I don't know if I buy that because I feel like videos are actually pretty snappy on my iPad. That, that would explain uh, the cell phone usage to me, but if on an iPad, if you're on a half-decent Wi-Fi network, it's super snappy. Yeah. I think it and the maps are the two things I like to show when I say, look how fast this is. Yeah, their other theory, which made a little bit more sense to me, was that your desktop has more distractions. Like your iPad, you're sort of doing one thing at a time. If you're loading a video, you're you're waiting for that video and then you're watching that video. On a desktop, you can have like eight things open. You could get like pulled away by something else you're working on or somebody emails you or I am or something and and it, it's a lot more sort of there's it's busier so you may click off the video after 10 seconds if there's something else that looks cool that was closer to my theory I, I had a few things one it's more fun to you know watch video on an iPad I think than on you know on a computer um, PCs are going to be used more often in the work situation where maybe you can't really you know view a five-minute clip unless mm -hmm. you're you know a jerk uh, <laughs> jerk uh, uh, or gener generation Y uh, the other, th but the th I think the number one thing I can think of is because you know it's loading an external app, it's taking you away from the website. You know you have to sort of commit to viewing it. It's there's more of a desire when you do click a video. Well, I better watch this. Whereas in if you know you're on a blog like in Gadget or Gizmodo, uh, and you, there's all of these, you just click it and it's embedded. And that way you know, okay, let me click this, let me watch it for ten seconds, let me decide if this is something I want. It's not pause. Whereas on iPad, you sort of have to make that decision before you start clicking stuff or tapping yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that makes sense to me. And I mean, obviously, news like this bodes very well for us here at This Weekend, <laughs> where we make longer form videos. And so we're, we're fighting that sort of YouTube effect of watch something for 30 seconds and get bored with it and click on to the next Shane Dawson video. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we're, we're hoping that people st develop habits where they actually want to watch longer form web video. And I definitely think the iPad makes that sort of more, it makes it more sense to watch longer videos on the iPad because yeah. it just looks great. Yeah. And Hulu's, uh, Hulu's hoping so. And Hulu is certainly hoping so, and, and uh, Netflix as well. So let's, uh, let's talk to Jason. I know he's been, he's been waiting patiently for us babbling for a half hour. Uh, so Jason, give us a little bit of background here. I I'm going to show Uzu while you're talking, so we'll, we'll give people a little sense. Uzu's one of the hardest kinds of apps to summarize for the uninitiated, but I'm going to do my best. It's basically... Uh, you, you get this sort of, these pixels, this sort of graphic going on, and then based on how my fingers interact with the iPad, it makes all sorts of different shapes, patterns, designs, and you can get really kind of lost in it for a long time just looking at how it changes based on how many fingers you're holding on it and what kind of movement you're doing. So how did you come up with this? How did you know this would be something fun? Where did the sort of genesis of it come from? Uh, well, for a long time, I was working on uh, doing little particle engine experiments in Flash and doing stuff in processing. And um, honestly, when the iPad first came out, I wasn't really into the idea. In fact, I told some friends I didn't like it, but then um, somebody at work brought one in, and uh, instantly I fell in love with the thing, and I just thought, holy crap, there's going to be a lot of stuff we can do with this. And um, I wanted to be able to try to take some of these more abstract experiments I was doing and put them on a bigger device uh, than the iPhone. I was never really attracted to the iPhone uh, so far as doing big form express expression like this, but um, the iPad really sealed the deal. So I got in there, I just started playing around. I started with one touch, I started with two touch. Really when I started, I had the idea for the single touch mode, the two touch mode, and the three touch mode. And um, I started playing around with it. And the more I played around with it, the more I, I was thinking that yeah, this needs to be an app that doesn't have a menu, that you, you shouldn't have to make any decisions other than I'm touching the screen, I see what happens, and then uh, you go from there. 
Yeah, and actually we were talking about that earlier about how it's one of the very rare apps that there's no intro, there's no menu, there's no like options like what colors do you want it to be or anything. You just you have to figure it out for yourself and the the process of discovery in a way is what's most fun. Like I actually uh I blew Jacob's mind right before the show, <laughs> showing him that if you put 10 fingers on it, move them up down, you can actually change the color. He was like, well, it's great, but you can't change the color. Uh, and it's like, oh, oh, but you can. You can I've actually. So many, people, it, so many people have emailed me uh, asking, saying that I love the app, but you know, it'd be great if you could change the color. So I, I, I tell them uh, how they can do it. Yeah, I almost, yeah, I shouldn't have blown that. I should have just let people know that you can and then let them figure it out spoiler for themselves. Alert. Can we yeah, that spoiler alert. We'll put a spoiler alert warning that, no, oh, I'm telling you. And also you could change the width of the little things. There's a lot, there's a lot of variation and a lot of fun stuff you can do, but it does require you to just kind of play around with it for a while, which is which I, I thought is really fun. And we yeah. were talking about educational apps before, which tend to be kind of lame. This one kind of encourages that sort of thinking, but without having, like, it's tied to, like, a Dora the Explorer style, like a little girl's like, you're right, like way to go. Like you just kind of figure things out and then you get that thrill of right. having figured it out. Because I think a lot of a lot of kids games, I mean, really sort of gloss over the sort of the fundamental nature of play, which is when you're a kid, you go outside and you play, you look at the environment, you see what's there, you see how it reacts, and then you make up a game for it. And um, I think that's sort of the essence of fun and the essence of play. So the goal here is very much to create something that was just about in a new reality, a new world that people could sort of interact with and play with, and they didn't have to think about menus. It, to me, that's what the that's what multi-touch is. That's what the iPad is. It's it opens up a world where you interact with something by interacting with it, not pressing a button on a menu that's tied to a thing, but rather the actual thing itself. And um, you know, working in a single-touch environment and on the computer is just sort of limiting when you come to, to this and you can do 10 different touches. And when you start having the modes interact with each other, um, you get lots of emergence effects and, and really making the switch to touchscreen made this type of app possible. Uh, I didn't even know this was possible before I started. I just started playing around with stuff that I loved and I played with it until it was fun. I, I play a lot of video games and so uh, I love control over video games and, and how you design good control. So it was a combination of Let's make something that's really pretty, but let's make something that really feels like you're controlling something. And I wanted to explore this sort of notion of um, multi-touch control without buttons. And the best way to do that was with an abstract interface. Um, I'm hoping to take the, the learnings from this and hopefully turn it into maybe a game um, or any number of apps. So like some something like when you say a game, like something with a little bit more like forward direction, like you do this and then you achieve something and then you move yeah. on to the next thing. Yeah, traditional game. I mean, and right. not necessarily turning Uzu into a game, but just using right. the notion of what you learn from how do I control something with five, six, seven, eight fingers and turning that into something that people can control. So this is almost research and development here, but it started to become such a fun thing that I just. Uh, the cooler it become, the more I, the, the cooler it became, the more excited I got about it, and so I started putting more stuff into it and more stuff into it, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's it's very it's very fun to play around, especially when you first get. I've introduced it to a bunch of people who enjoy it. Uh, so you, you call it a quote kinetic multi-touch <laughs> particle visualizer. Uh, can you, I know that, it, I'm sure there's stuff going on with this that is beyond my pay grade, but can you walk us through that a little, like break that down for us? Like what's really happening when I touch the screen? Like how am I interacting with these particles? Well, um, in layman's terms. Sure, sure. <laughs> Basically what's happening is you have 3,000 particles that the, that we're keeping track of with software. Now all these particles are moving around in some type of simulation system. And as you put your fingers down, that will put the system into different modes of animation. And each one of those modes of animation is just responding to uh, the, the points of the, the finger on the screen. And it was just about finding a way that, um, that each number of fingers uh, could expressively control a, a visual uh, setting. Um, I, I think I got too complicated in, in that description, well, but I mean, basically, I, I'm mostly you know, it's, I it's, about eighty percent of that, so <laughs> that's pretty good. It's um, you, you know, kinetic because you move it, uh, multi-touch because you can use all your fingers, and it's a particle visualizer. But um, you know, it, it really is it, it very much meant to be about exploration and just about playing around, seeing what you can do. One of the 
one of the defining moments for me. I was I was in an early prototype working on it, and I had come to New York uh, to visit some friends. We were in a bar, and I took it out hesitantly, and and uh, some guys were like, I don't like the iPad. And then I put it down, and people started playing with it, and they liked it. But then um, multiple people started playing with it. And we realized that when you put it down on a bar table or something like that, and uh, one guy has some hands on it, and another person might have some hands on it, but it sort of changes the nature of how it acts because you get used to what two fingers does. But you know, if your friend puts three fingers down and then you start using two fingers, it's something different happens. So um, what I really loved and what I loved about the iPad in general um, is it sort of humanizes the technology. You, you get to a place where you remove the keyboard, you remove the mouse, and it becomes about... Uh, about interaction again, and, and people can interact with this kind of app together. And it's not about, um, I love gaming, but I hate the way that it's sort of a solitary thing sometimes. Um, I would love to see a whole new world of apps where people can just, it's not a single player game or a two player game, it's just a, a thing that anybody can interact with. Right. The chat room wants me to ask you, please don't take offense, were you, were you baked when you came up with this? Oh man, you know, you'd be surprised how many people can ask me that question. Um, uh, when I was young, my, a lot of my parents' friends used to ask me if I was on drugs, and, and then I wasn't. Uh, who knows if I was really? I'll say, I'll say this much: I do support, I do support legalization, um, and I would love it the feds knocked off that stuff. But um, good. that's all I'll say about that. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> very, very diplomatic. I like that one. Um, so uh, the, the app is, I mean, obviously, once you try it, you're, you're in. Everybody I've shown it to is like, oh, this is super fun once they try it. But it's, it's a tough sell. I mean, it's almost impossible yeah. to describe it to someone if they haven't tried. It's like, no, you touch and colors come up. and then. But, yeah. you know, you, you can't really express it. Um, so how did you get the word out about the app? I found out about it when Chris Perillo uh, sort of yeah. tweeted about it and let the world know. But were you doing anything before that? I mean, how did you get it in front of him? How did you, like, let the world know you'd created something really cool and, and you sure. know, get it out there? Well, I mean, um, I had been working in advertising for a while, so I sort of, I was familiar with all the channels. I, I knew uh, what was going on with and had a lot of friends on Facebook and things like that. Early on, I put a video on YouTube that got um, a few thousand views before I released it, so that was cool. Um, but really, the biggest thing that I, I did was making it 99 cents for the 4th of July weekend. Mm -hmm. um, in that weekend alone, 70,000 people downloaded it. Wow. And... Um, yeah, it went to the number one free app, and um, I, I think from there it really started to blow up because it is a thing where you use it, and then you show it to your friends, and you get excited about it together and things like that. And in fact, today, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but today uh, Uzu just got iPad app of the week from the oh. Apple Store. Yeah. Well, there you go. Which is, well, yeah, it's, I'm pretty excited about. So it's uh, That's going to help. Yeah, I'm checking. It's headed back up the charts, which is pretty cool. <laughs> that's aw that's awesome. And I mean, it, it is like this is actually what we were saying. I talk a lot on the show about uh, the iPad has this kind of intangible wow factor. Like when you're looking at an app, it's it's easy to say, you know, oh, it has this kind of functionality or that. But it's not like reviewing a lot of other software just because it's not really it's, it's about aesthetics and form and just having this like, is this something different from what people have seen? And does this show off what's cool about the iPad? There's kind of this innately it either is, is cool or it isn't kind of thing. And Uzu is one of those things that it just, you see it and you're like, oh, wow, this is totally different from everything else I have seen. Uh, you know, and, and it makes sense that Apple would want to sort of bring, bring themselves along with that and sort of highlight it for people who may be new to the iPad and checking it out. It really is, I think, one of my three, two or three apps I would definitely just, like, when if so, a, a cynic comes by, an Android mm -hmm. user perhaps, and say, and just <laughs> throw it at them. <laughs> right, like, there's nothing else that does this. And when, uh, when the iPad very, very first came out, I, I, was, at a, I was at a bar with a friend, uh, and he, he was showing plants and zombies off, and it had that same kind of, like, Oh, this is so cool, and you could put down the plants and rip them up. If if Uzu was available then, this would have been one that I would have started up and been like, "Well, check this out. You're not baked, right?" <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so it's got to be one of the best reviewed apps out there. I mean, it's getting app of the week. All every review I read, because I I look up the reviews on on whatever we're going to talk about, and almost every review, universal acclaim. Uh, was this was this was there a moment when you were working on it where you were like? oh, this is super fun, this is going to be a hit? Or were you genuinely surprised when it got out there and all of a sudden people are like going nuts for it and downloading it like crazy? No, I mean, the, the thing is, something like this certainly doesn't happen by an accident. Um, I, I have my mind blown with it multiple times. Like, I kept doing stuff and being like, oh, wow, this is cool. Um, let's see what else I can do. I do another thing. Wow, this is cool. And so 
what was exciting to me was to take this string of epiphany moments that I had while making it and to be able to put them together in one package, set that down in front of somebody and watch them have all those moments right in one experience. Um, so when I, when I got done with it, I knew that I liked it and I knew that the people who would get it would love it. Um, but I wasn't sure how wide that audience of people who would like something so abstract. I thought maybe. Um, but, you know, like you said, this is something that's really hard to describe, something that's really hard to sort of uh, wrap your head around abstractly. I, it's showing a screenshot is almost worthless. Um, yeah. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> yeah. Some sort of animated screenshot you would need, yeah. or animated GIF would be the only real way to show, a, show it off that way. Uh, so doing my research for this interview, uh, I saw an Ars Technica article that said the app is running two, as many as 2.25 million calculations at one time. Uh, was there ever any issues with the iPad's processing speed? Last week, we had the developer of Osmos, uh, a game on there, uh, and he said, like, that was the number one challenge when creating it for the iPad was the processing speed, and it was kind of slower than you'd think, and even if he, I think he even mentioned, like, if he was developing it for iPhone 4, he would have had an easier time. So did you ever, do you have any complaints about that? Did you ever run into that with all the calculations that are going on behind the scenes? Uh, I mean... Not really. It would be a hard question to ask. Really, you just take what you have. I mean, the very, very much this project was about starting with the iPad and going from there. So right. I, it, I know I've done a lot of development in Flash, and it's, it's a pain in the butt when you're developing and you don't know what computer somebody's going to be using and not. But you know, when I was able to work on the iPad, I knew exactly what someone had. So it wasn't about going, oh, I don't have enough power. It was about going, here's the amount of power I have. What can I do with it? And so... I tweaked it until it was interesting for this, and then I got to know that every single person who experienced it is going to experience uh, this here. So I love the power that, that it has. I mean, compared to the the iPhone, it, it, it seems great. Um, you know, no, no complaints here. Of course, this is my first sort of foray into uh, hardware accelerated rendering, so I was just impressed across the board, really. <laughs> All right. You want to ask your Objective-C uh, I, I question, have a Diego? constant battle with uh, a, a reader who doubted Objective-C being a choice of a programming language. So I'll ask again, what do you think of Objective-C as a programming language? Well, um, it, I like it. I mean, with anything, when you're giving your opinion of stuff, it, it's got its pluses and minuses. I will say that um, at first I was really intimidated by the syntax. It seems kind of, ugh, for somebody who's used got to it. documentation. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you get into it. And the thing is, if an environment gives you control that's a little closer to the, the system, a little low, lower level, that's great, but it's going to be more complex. Um, so really, it introduces some things that take a little more time to code, but in the end, you're getting a lot. You're actually buying some things. So it's just another language. The logic is still the same. Question uh, from the chat room. Uh, does Uzu use GL directly, or is it using a 3D engine like Unity, Ogre, etc.? No, it's it's rendering straight with OpenGL 1.5, I think. Draw vertices. I'm gonna pretend I knew what that means. <laughs> uh, so, of course. Uh, uh, can you give us? Oh, certainly. I could have told you that. Uh, could you give us any insight into? I know you mentioned you're you're thinking of working on a game. Any yeah. any insight into where Uzu is gonna go from here? I mean, is is Uzu kind of okay? That's what that is, and now I'm gonna apply this to some fanciful uh, other kind of game, or is there other stuff we can look forward to coming down the pike for this? Yeah, well, I'm definitely working on uh, updates to it. I've been, I'm right in the middle of just getting done with a move, moved from Chicago to New York, and so sort of getting things settled up, and um, I've just gotten back on the development track. So right now, I'm currently working on a iPhone version of, of Uzu. Now, I, the iPhone being a totally different instrument, I'm, I'm really having to uh, address some of the questions. I, I got five touches yeah. on the, the iPhone to work with, and so... Um, I don't want to just toss Uzu on the iPhone and be done with it. I want to approach it with the same type of um, refinement as I approached Uzu. Now, um, in regards to Uzu itself, I definitely have some more stuff I want to do. Um, I'm going to integrate some type of autoplay where you can just sort of, you know, maybe you just shake the thing and then you set it down and it just starts making the prettiness happen by itself. That's a great uh, idea which I really love to do. And then, you know, maybe when the autoplay is happening, you can tilt it around, you get some motion controls. Um, I would. I love to enable VGA out. I'm working on that. I have a prototype of that working. It's amazing on a television. Um, 
And I'm also thinking about ways to integrate the iPhone with it. You know, I, I think it would be great if you could get a room full of people all with their iPhones, you know, each iPhone representing a single finger on Uzu. And then you plug Uzu into a big television and then people at a party or in a room or anywhere could all be sort of controlling it together. Dude, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that blew my mind. That would be amazing. So uh, those are my ideas for them. It's just a matter of, you know, how quickly I can get that, get that stuff out. Um, but I'm just starting to get settled, just starting to get my... Um, get my momentum back up with programming. Sweet. Anything else for Jason? That's, uh, that's all I got. All right, Jason, thank you so much for joining us and showing off uh, Uzu. Lo love, the pro love the product. Great, great app. Everybody should go check it out. And at Uzu for the iPad on Twitter if you want to uh, get in yeah. touch with uh, Jason. He'll get back to you eventually. Yeah, yeah. and I just want to, say, I want to say thanks to everybody who downloaded. I mean, it's, it's been great. All of the momentum has come from people who seem to really just love the app. So... That's great, and I just want to say thanks to everybody. Yeah, thanks to everybody who downloaded Uzu. Thanks to everybody who checked out our Uzu interview, and thank you to Jason for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. So uh, we have another, uh, we got to talk about another sponsor right now. Uh, it is a company uh, called Walala. They make a product called Print Magic HD. I think uh, we have a little uh, video clip that we made for them. Can we, uh, can we roll that? Ever since Willala introduced its Print Magic app for iPhone and iPad, no one needs my fantastical enchantments anymore. You can copy and paste any text or images into the app, and it prints them on HP, Epson, or most other Wi Fi connected printers. You can even download the print test for Print Magic and try it out before you buy it. Print out a map with directions, a copy of an important email, or any of your favorite photos directly from your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch. It's so easy, it's just like magic, only without the magician. Print Magic. Easily print images, text, and web pages from your iPad. No wizards required. That poor, poor wizard. <sighs> it's a, a tearjerker. It's I'm not sad. just an ad, it's a tearjerker. Oscar worthy. Oh, thank, Oscar thank you. Oscar worthy. Thank you. So, so uh, de definitely check out Print Magic. It's a, it's a great app. Uh, we, we love having them uh, on board. Uh, they've been they've been with us for for weeks now. One of the very first sponsors to come forward and believe in the little iPad show we're doing here. Everybody go thank at Wellala W E L L A L A underscore Inc on Twitter uh, and go check out Print Magic HD. And you can get a free you can try their free test app. And make sure it's going to work on your iPad uh, before you even buy it. So uh, can't really say enough nice things about them. So let's uh, let's review some apps. It's time for uh, we're going to take a look at some note taking apps today on a little segment Jacob and I like to call. Planet of the Apps. You maniac! Damn you! God damn you all to hell! Don't download it, Mon. You might not like how it runs. Still playing with Uzu during the uh, during the little break there. I can't I can't get enough. Uh, so why don't you kick us off? We're going to take a look, as I said, at note taking apps. This is uh, one of the little you know sort of fun perks of the iPad that didn't really occur to me when I first got one, and yet I find myself using this kind of functionality maybe more than anything else. Just like when you're in a meeting or you're chatting with someone, and you want to take something down real quick. So uh, why don't why don't you kick it off with your first uh, note taking app? So we're going to start with Evernote, which I'll sort of preface by saying uh, is. It's a note-taking app, but it does a whole lot more. Uh, some for the good, some for the worse. Um, do we have my screen? No? There we go. There we go. Uh, so uh, this is what happens when you load it up. It automatically puts you in note-taking mode, and you say, uh, uh, wizards are sad. Um, Aww. They are. It was a Poor very, Merlon. Merlon um, the Magnificent you can, can't catch a you break. You can tag your notes. Um, I have a couple foo. We'll tag it foo and then save it, and it's there. Uh, you can search your notes, so we just type in wizards, so let's type in wizards, and search, and it's there. 
Um, it saves everything in the cloud. You can access it on your Mac. They have a Mac app. They have an Android app. They have an iPad app. They have an iPhone app, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they do a, a lot of really powerful things. Uh, Mike Brocco of Mahalo in this mm. weekend. Uh, this this weekend, weekend, social, social media. media um, is a huge, huge, huge. He has an Evernote T-shirt. He's, He's a all big fan. He's giant a big fan. fan. Maybe more of a fan of Evernote than Apple, which is saying no. Quite, I don't quite think that's possible. I don't know. Talking to the guy, he's <laughs> he's he's into it, yeah. and he was showing me some of the cool things. If you take a picture of an image. Uh, or you uh, take a note and embed an image, it will... Hey, that's my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it is. I was stalking you. Yeah. Uh, it will actually OCR the text. So if we search for, uh, if we go home and I search for, is a liquor store, so we search for Crown Royal, Crown Search. So it's uh, actually reading that yeah, sign? It takes it like a couple of minutes, but it'll OCR the... Look at that. Yeah. And so, and it's got, you know, a little highlight there. That's so pretty amazing. It's got some extremely it's powerful features. Uh, it's, I, um... That said, I'm a very I'm a big fan of uh, things these very simple apps that do one thing really really well, right? Uh, because it kind of cuts down on the OCD of the estate and uh, or the experience. Uh, <laughs> you don't like that I use that word, but I love that you use that word. What are you talking? <laughs> a little about? bit too much. Um, uh, so it's got a very sort of busy interface. You can do a lot of stuff. You can organize things in a lot of different ways, which I'm not a giant fan of. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really. It's not sort of how my mind works, despite being very uh, ADD myself. Um, so, so you're saying that sometimes, like a little bit of simplicity would go a long way. So it, it, an app that does one thing awesomely may be better than an app that does 500 things, right? But in varying degrees of success. If they maybe. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, Evernote is clearly made for a certain kind of person, and it, the Evernote fans like Brocco are hugely, hugely into it. So mm -hmm. I, it's not me to say they should be doing anything differently. So it's hard to give it a negative view for that. That said, it was, I it was difficult for me to embrace. Um, I, I I use Evernote too, and I have to say, at first it was. Perplexing. You have to Daunting. spend a day or two in it, and then you sort of get the feel of it, and you can decide these features really appeal to me. These I will never use. And I, I, I didn't even hit the tip of the iceberg of the features it has. You can save right. notes from your Mac and copy and paste. You can do audio clips. You can do all of these wonderful things. Uh, so if that's how your mind works, absolutely, it's all of it's free. Uh, they have a premium version, but you can try Evernote completely free. So it's yeah. absolutely worth trying out. It's super powerful, and if you find yourself into it, use it. It's awesome. It's one of those apps that I think it was actually on. I believe uh, Mashable had that list when the iPad was first out. Uh, maybe it was Gizmodo, the, like the essential iPad apps. And if anybody out there has an iPad and hasn't at least tried out Evernote. You, you absolutely. But even if you don't, try it, and uh, you shouldn't digress too far. But even if you don't have an iPad, if you just have a computer and a phone, give it a shot. It yeah. is really awesome for that. And um, the syncing, if you do get the, uh, I have it on my desktop at home as well, and the syncing is really nice. I mean, a lot, a lot better than a lot of other iPad apps and how they try to interact with your other computers. Uh, Evernote, it's very intuitive. You just sync. And then wherever you are, you pull in all the stuff you were doing wherever else you were. So yeah, definitely worth a try. May or may not fit uh, the way your mind thinks, and if it does, use it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna. My first one is called Paper Desk. We'll take a look. It's only a. Uh, it's only a buck ninety nine, which is a pretty good deal because it's it's pretty full featured. You can see I, I had a little test note here this week in iPad. Uh, the cool thing about this one is you can mix doodling and typing. So you can type text if you want, and then you can make a little doodle as well. I sort of figured as a test I would write a sentence and then uh, try to draw an iPad. And like I said, I've explained before, I can't draw at all. Forgive me. Uh, it, that's not a necessarily a commentary on the how well the app works. Uh, it, it, you know, the controls are pretty easy to figure out. You're sort of default to text so I can type. And then you can go up here and you can select the pen and you can start, you know, sort of doodling. Uh, and then you can even, it's got, it's got a pretty good sort of variation of you can choose your different colors, you can choose the size you want the, the pen to be and, you know, what color you want it to be and, and all that stuff. Pretty intuitive. So really, really nice features there uh, as, as far as that goes. Uh, you can record audio, which is a really cool sort of extra bonus here that most of these others don't have. So I could I could just hit. And it's hard to see there. You could just hit you know new recording or play recording, and you could tie audio to whatever notes you were taking. And a, a really neat feature is it has a built-in sort of VGA connector. So you could, if you were taking notes during like a meeting, hook it right into a VGA and then display it. So really, like the idea of taking notes on like a whiteboard during a meeting, you sort of don't need to mess around with that. You could just take your notes here and then project it and it gets rid of all that sort of sloppy, chaotic 
unpleasantness of having to deal with having a whiteboard. Uh, really, the only uh, two sort of drawbacks, um, the, the pen and the eraser functions are pretty janky. Uh, it, it's tough to use. You can see the eraser here, like, I gotta really go over what I want to erase to get rid of it. It, it, it doesn't, it's not smooth like you would sort of hope. The pen as well is a little clunky, even though I'm a bad artist, this is particularly gruesome because it's not really very tight, the controls. And then there's no zoom in and out when you pinch. I'm just used to that with apps now. And if I can't zoom in and out and I'm trying to draw, it just makes for an overall sort of clunky experience. A couple other things I should mention on the, on the bright side, you can actually set up an account with mypaperdesk.com and sync it just like Evernote. So it has that feature. And uh, there is a free sort of light version. So you can try it out for free if you want to before you pay. Uh, but it's only two bucks anyway. And uh, it does allow for keyboards. So if you have a Bluetooth keyboard, you could type instead of typing on your iPad, which is it's just a neat feature too. For $2, if this is the sort of app that interests you, I think it's probably the best of its kind, and I would probably recommend it. Uh, yeah, so a lesser degree, in the, uh, quick quick tangent. Uh, we were discussing earlier about how we've, we've developed the ability to to tell, usually accurately, whether an app is good or bad, kind of based on its name. So Yes, we, 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 I think, that, I don't know if we're getting cynical or we've just been doing this for a long time, but a lot of the time I'll look at a category of apps and pick out some of the ones I've seen reviewed, and you can see the title of them and be like, trash, that one's going to suck. On that note, mm -hmm. uh, I, I did uh, pad notes. Pad notes. Pad notes. <laughs> so was, this was one, obviously, usually when they have the word pad, pad in them, it's a bad sign. Yeah, usually not very good. So it's what like what you just reviewed, except it's all finger-based. There's no typing. Right. Um, which, you know, it's, so it's basically like a really poor drawing app. You can do a you know, new document. You have... Uh, it goes it slowly, load either empty, lined, yeah. or squared. These ones that are just writing with your finger, I'm about to review one as well, they're kind of an odd duck because there's so many drawing apps which you it, could do the same functionality on. Why do you need this particular I, one? The one feature it has which is interesting, I'll, I'll say, and I'll test it out, is you can load a PDF uh, from the internet so and then write notes on that. So if I type in like menu PDF, um, to get just a generic PDF to load from. Uh, clearly developed by uh, Italian, because uh, they missed a translation. It's, we have Cardica, which I think is load in Italian. Uh, so we'll load that. Um, and there's the menu. And then I can write, look, yummy. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of cool. Which, uh, it, it's an interesting, and you can export it. You can email, you can export as a PDF. So I'm it's gonna got go some... ahead and say this is better than I thought it would be with the name <laughs> Pad Notes. Fair enough. But that said, it has neat features that you don't necessarily need from a note-taking It's um, device. So yes. it's interesting. Like They clearly have a few neat techniques, but I don't know if it makes very good uh, note-taking. Fair enough. Uh, I do want to pause right here before uh, we go on. We got a couple other uh, we got a couple other apps to get through, but we have to talk about Gazelle.com, uh, another sponsor uh, of the show, uh, a great company. We've talked about them a couple times before. You guys know what Gazelle does. Gazelle is uh, they're a pretty well known brand at this point. Uh, they you you go to Gazelle and you can sell your old used electronics online. You don't need to go to eBay. You don't need to mess around with. Uh, you know, any, any go going to some used junk shop and pawning them or whatever. If you've got all these electronics, they're taking up space in your house. You don't know what to do with them. You don't just want to chuck them. You don't want them to sit in some landfill. It, it's not good for the earth, and you get nothing out of that. You go to Gazelle instead, and you get cash for your gadgets. You can come right here, and we can look up, like, let's say I wanted to get a 3G iPad instead of just the regular one that I have. I go in here, I type in Wi-Fi iPad, and it'll search around. It brings them up right here. I don't even have to mess around in the site. Uh, I've got the 32 gig. We will search. So then you just answer a couple easy questions. It powers on, no water damage. I'd say it's in perfect condition. I take good care of my stuff. I've got all this stuff. Uh, I just go through, I click these boxes, yes, and then I calculate. And we'll see, they want to give me almost $400 for my iPad. This, it's almost what they're selling for new. It's basically like uh, undo the entire transaction I ever did. Uh, I really like this feature too. You actually get a graph here where you can see how much it's worth today, how much they think it's going to be worth, how much it was worth. This one, it actually seems like it's gone up. Uh, looks like a week ago they were offering $326. Now they're offering me $392. Uh, and then they were even offering $351. So 
now's the time. Yeah, I may, I may take them up. You can host this show by yourself, right? Got I may it. take them up on this. Uh, and then if they want what you're selling, they'll even send you a box. Shipping is free if you do it through the USPS. Uh, I mean, you know, there's no reason not to do it if you've got stuff just sitting around. I went, uh, when we were going to buy the new iPhone 4, we were in the line, and I was talking to some people out there. There was a guy there who said, his name's Andrew, nice guy. He said, I don't ever throw electronics away. I have every piece of electronics I've ever had in my house because I don't know what to do with them. They're on the floor of the closet. They're taken up in shelves. His, his mom, I guess he still lives with his mom. His mom's going crazy, <laughs> like, oh, get rid of all this stuff. He, he, you know, he doesn't know what to do with it. He's just, it's just sitting there. You know, he could probably make a couple thousand dollars getting rid of all that stuff on Gazelle. And it's it, the best part is it's going to someone who wants it. It's not just going to go out there in the world somewhere and take up space. It's actually going to get in front of somebody maybe in another country. You know, maybe from this country who just never bought one new or is looking for an old one. And it's going to give someone else some joy, which is, which is really nice. And even if they're not interested in buying what you've got, they'll take it off your hands. They'll recycle it for you. You don't have to do anything. I mean, what, there's no reason not to go give it a try. No, no lose proposition. It's win-win. Uh, you know, you're guaranteed to get something out of it. So go to gazelle.com, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. Come, give it a try, and we thank them, of course, for, for sponsoring the show. Really appreciate it. Everybody go to Twitter, at gazelle.com, and thank them for sponsoring the show. And let them know if you've used the product, what you think, and what you sold to them. And uh, it, it works great. I mean, I'm definitely, when I upgrade, when they finally get my iPhone 4, I'm going to get rid of my 3G on Gazelle, use the money towards my new iPhone 4. Why, why not? Why wouldn't you? All right, let, let, let's move on. Thanks to Gazelle. Uh, we really appreciate it, and all of our sponsors. Uh, my next uh, my next app that I will be talking about is called Penultimate. It's very much like uh, Pad Notes that you were just talking about. Uh, the one difference, I mean, the real thing to recommend Penultimate is that it is very pretty. So you can see here, uh, everything is like it's done like it's a leather bound notebook. Uh, you got you know you can also pick your different kinds of paper, so you can get your graph paper, your lined paper. There we go. Graph paper, line paper, plain paper. Uh, you just, you know, you write on it with your finger just like a pen. The one thing is a, a stylus doesn't really work that well on this because it's very sensitive. So you'd have to hold the stylus in such a way so nothing else touches the screen, which is a little clunky. Um, the, as you can see, the, the aesthetics are the number one thing. The ink looks really nice. It looks like you're really writing on a piece of paper. Uh, and then if you click here and you can see all of my notebooks, it goes back into this. You, you can fold them up. You can see what's on the front page. Uh, as you can see, I don't really use it to take many notes. I did a little doodle. Uh, you know, and uh, it, it, it's basically like a drawing app that's also a note-taking app. I'm, I'm going off of that to hide my shame. Uh, and you can email the, your notes to yourself easily. It's got most of the functionality most of these note-taking apps have. Uh, some of the minuses, the eraser works, but as you'll, be, as you'll see in a moment here, the diameter on the eraser is huge. I mean, <laughs> you make one little tiny wrong mark and you've erased all of your work. Uh, there is an undo button, but it, it's just, it's not, it's not ideal at all. I mean, you'd really want to have something that was less sensitive, so you could just erase a little thing instead of, like, half the page all with one swipe. Uh, there's no choice of colors. There's no choice of pen diameter. It's really not very robust in that way. And again, no zoom. You can't go in or out. So any kind of detailed work, if you want to add a little detail or change the font size or something, because you're just using your finger, it's one font. Uh, one size fits all. Uh, it, it's it's not it's not perfect, and it's two ninety nine. So I think you're probably better off with a paper desk if you're only going to get one of these. In terms of you get to type in that one, and you get to draw, and it's cheaper. Uh, having said that. Uh, it is very pretty. It, it's, a, it's a nice looking app, and it's one of those apps that you could show somebody, and it's cool on the iPad because it looks like you have a little leather notebook in front of you, and the ink looks nice. And it, it, for those, for aesthetically oriented people out there, this is a great app. If you own a moleskin. If you own a moleskin, I'm going to get is corrected. It moleskin? No. I think it's moleskin. That is ridiculous. I'm not <laughs> saying that ever. Moleskin. I got corrected by Chris Miller, former Mahal employee, when I called it a moleskin. So he can suck it. He will tweet me if I don't <laughs> right, say that. Fair enough. Uh, so uh, I was going to review the default app, Notes, and then last second, Audible, uh, doing last minute research, uh, just checking, make sure, you know, dotting my eyes. There's another app I'd like to review called Simple Note, mm -hmm. which really is, I think, a, a, just a superior version of the Notes app. It um, doesn't have the aesthetics of uh, notes where it's nice and lined and leather and all of that. But in terms of usefulness, uh, it's basically, uh, I clicked an ad. 
Uh, it has ads. It's free, uh, ad-supported. You can pay, I think it's $10 a year or something to subscribe to the premium service, um, which will remove ads, add RSS feeds, add a lot of other neat uh, features, premium support, but it works exactly like uh, the um, Notes app that you get on then with a couple ni niceties, including uh, wireless syncing. It'll sync uh, over the cloud uh, across all your devices. You can check it on your computer um, and works really solidly, very easy to use. If you've used the Notes app, you know how to use this. Mm -hmm. um, you can search your notes, easy to type. Um, but you get the wireless syncing, uh, which right now isn't available on the iPad, but it is available through MobileMe on iOS 4. So come September, if you have a MobileMe account, you're paying $100 a year, you will get over-the-air cloud syncing of notes. But nice. if you don't want to pay that much, or um, you're against MobileMe, or you don't want to wait, uh, simple notes, simple note, excuse me, uh, mm. it's free, why not download it? Yeah, I had one more I wanted to show off real simply, just because I think it's funny. Uh, and App Show actually in the in the chat room, another another great show uh, about iPad and apps, and everybody check that out. Uh, is recommending Info Note, which I didn't check out for this week's segment. I checked out Helveta Note. Uh, uh, it's it's amusing to me because it's for people who are they must have their notes in Helvetica. It really doesn't have anything else significant about it. It's different from the other apps we talked about, other than uh, it is all in Helvetica. You could see I've typed my little this week in iPad, and I've drawn my little iPad here, and it is all in lovely, luscious, delicious Helvetica font. If that is your choice of font, I know I'm, I'm a fan of the Helvetica font myself. Uh, $2.99 to write all your notes for the rest of your life <laughs> in Helvetica. Uh, you can write and draw. You can email the notes yourself. They actually have a, a couple different sort of color options, so if you're uh, you know, you want to have the background in yellow, you can make the background yellow. If you want to have it in white, if you want to have it in black. Uh, you know, not, not a ton. It's pretty bare bones. It's really about typing in Helvetica as opposed to any other font. Uh, some of the downsides, it does have a search function, which is kind of cool, but it only searches the titles. It doesn't search all of the content of your notes, uh, which I'm not, you know, as, as into. I'd rather it would be more sort of fully featured. And it's also uh, cap sensitive, which is like, which is weird. I mean, why do a search function like that? Uh, drawing is not the easiest thing in the world. It's a little labor to draw. Uh, you're definitely better off with penultimate or uh, paper desk if you want to draw in the app. And, uh, you know, the controls are pretty loose. I found myself flipping between notes even when I didn't necessarily uh, want to do so, uh, which is a little clunky. But overall, if you are a hardcore Helvetica fan, uh, you're definitely going to want to get Helvetica Note just for the pleasure of being able to type all of your notes to yourself and email yourself in your favorite font. Um, so I guess that's it. Out of all the ones I uh, saw, Paper Desk was, was easily my favorite. Uh, although I also think you're probably OK with just the basic notes app that comes with everybody's uh, iPad. Like I said, if, if you have an iPhone and an iPad and you want the syncing, download Simple Note. There's no yeah. reason not to. It's free. Yeah. Uh, and then you can use a both if you're depending on what you do. And it's definitely worth trying Evernote. And, it's I, and not, I also think, yeah, everybody should try Evernote if they have an iPad. It's free, and then it's great. And, and it might full, very fully featured. It might change your life, like some people, or you just <laughs> might get a note. That was a direct quote. How many quote. apps can you say that about? It might just change your life. That is a direct quote uh, from our good friend. So, yeah, I would uh, love. They're in the app show, and the chat room said someday they'll get OmniFocus on the, on the iPad. I'm in when that yes. happens. That would be amazing. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for joining us. We went a little over today. This is probably the longest episode on record of This Week in iPad. So much to talk about. We had a great time showing off Uzu uh, and talking about all of our great sponsors. Uh, stay tuned right after the show coming up in about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, it's This Week in Video Games. It's the uh, number one video podcast in iTunes U.S. store this week. It's, it's not it dropped a couple slots, but it was number one video podcast in the U.S. and iTunes this week. Uh, today they're taking an in-depth look at Super Mario Galaxy 2. They're rating the top five PS3 exclusives of all time. They're going to take a look ahead at the Microsoft Connect and Dark Spore. They're looking at the new James Bond video game, Bloodstone. I cannot wait for that one. Um, and then after that, This Week in Music with guests Tim Matson and Tony Tigg. One more time, thanks to our sponsors. Go on Twitter, thank them, at Press Display, at Willala underscore Inc., at Gazelle uh, it's underscore com. And Press Reader is Press Direct Displays app. Everybody go check it out. It's amazing. Uh, also, Print Magic HD is Walala's uh, app. 
can't recommend it enough. Uh, and thank you to Jason for hanging out, uh, creator of Uzu, at Uzu for the iPad. Go check out Uzu in the App Store. Tons of fun. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, a great time. Everybody who lo downloads it loves it, especially if you have kids or if you have people who don't know the iPad. They'll love to check it out. So thanks to Jason for coming by. And thank you to all of you for hanging out and sharing with us the joy of another episode of This Week in iPad.